chords with one key. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of different ways that you can do it. Inside Patcher, you go to Yoda Saw. We talked about that one. But the one that I like to use more than anything is because you can use it on any sample, any patch, any plugin is up in the top. You know, the little piano mm -hmm. tab up top, right click on it. You can come down here. You could first off choose a root note. So you could choose whatever root note you want. Let's just do like C sharp, right? Make sure that it's turned on too, because if you uncheck it, it won't work. So it has to be highlighted orange. Then you can come down and you can choose major chord map or minor natural chord map. And as far as I can see and remember, those are the only two ones that really work. So you can't get into like crazy different kinds of scales, but you can do a basic major chord map and a, a minor natural chord map. So if you choose minor natural chord map and then it gives you octaves, I just leave that on default. So we got C sharp minor natural chord map. Now, if you go and you load up any kind of plugin, I like just to open up FL keys probably. Whenever you hit a key on the keyboard, I'm just hitting the letter Y on here. We got an instant chord. <laughs> I mean, how much easier can you make it? So that's just like a fire little thing that, I don't know, it's helped me so much because I don't know how to play keys like that. You know how to play keys. Mm. I can't play keys like that. I mean, I can kind of make sense. I don't I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So this feature helped me out a ton and I love it more than the whole Patcher and Yoda saw thing because you could just put it on any single thing that you want. Yeah. The other thing that I really love about that is the fact that you can actually see when you record it, you could see the MIDI notes coming in in the actual chord rather than I think in Yoda saw it's just like one note that comes in and you have to do a whole bunch of other stuff to hmm. enable to see I got you. the actual chords like that you're being played. Thing. So this way, people might call it cheating. People might say, go learn how to play piano. Go learn music theory. Okay, dude. I would say <laughs> that is helping me learn music theory. Yeah. That's helping me learn how to play piano because it's showing me how to play a chord. Right. I can reverse engineer it if I want to take the time. Mm -hmm. Kids nowadays, you can either take the time and be really super interested in it, or you're just worried about how fast can I get music out, mm -hmm. right? So you got, you got one or two different kinds of producers out there. Right. I like to learn from that. That's helped me so much. Learn how to form a certain triad chord rather than going and reading a book on music theory. I'm not doing right. that. There's, and there's more than one way to learn something too. Yeah. Like you ain't got to go book a piano teacher to learn piano. That's like, you could say the same thing about people who learn stuff on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, like use that trick to look at what's going on. If you're interested, again, you gain literacy from using stuff like that. You're right. like, oh, this is a chord and there's three notes in it. If you're interested, you look it up and you're like, oh, there's chords that have six notes in them. It's limitless. And the, <laughs> and the music theory stuff is only helping you understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. Music theory doesn't make you a better producer at all or a better composer at all. It doesn't. What it helps you do is identify kind of like maybe where to go next and why, you know, certain things and dynamics work. But come on, bro. Yeah. Like people were making great music before they understood what was going on. You yeah, know exactly. They were like, just doing it. You think they, yeah. uh, somebody just before music was invented, somebody created music theory before music was ever <laughs> invented and then say, hey, I got this new thing called they music theory. They engineered music theory from music. Exactly. Make the music. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, People made music first and then they said, oh, right. here's why this works. Yeah. If you want to get super nerdy and, and into it and scientific about it, here's why yeah, all nerd. this stuff works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I'm a nerd. I feel yeah, like I'm an FL sure. Studio nerd. I feel like everybody's like nerdy about something. Nerd used to mean something so bad back in the day. I don't know. I like the term nerd now. I like being called an FL Studio nerd. It means yeah. that I know something. You nerd now don't see <laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah, I'm nerd you know what I'm now. Saying? I'm geeking out yeah, on this. For real. Absolutely. Like you said, I think music theory is just one of those things where I think it can really help you in certain situations, but it all depends on what kind of situations you're trying to get yourself into. For sure. You know, so if you're trying to just make beats, yeah. have fun with it, put out music constantly, do you need music theory? I don't think so. Mm. If you want to be a session musician, mm -hmm. if you want to get into studios and be like a guitar player that runs into a studio and just gets paid to play guitar on people's records, mm -hmm. I think you might want to know music theory for that. Yeah. Because they then you like you somebody comes in here's the sheet music mm -hmm. you know or hey we're in the key of blah 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 we're yeah. doing this we're doing that you need to know this all right what's the mm -hmm. tempo what's the bpm what's the key what's the scale all right. right i'm in there i know and then they can instantly just rock with that mm -hmm. because they know music theory so i think it really depends on what kind of situation you're trying to get yourself into right and an exposure to both like i'd say that you don't need to know music theory it's definitely good to pick it up so anytime that you get around somebody who has that kind of knowledge like definitely pick it up and try to pick their brain about what they're doing and what they know and then the same same thing goes for if you're a professionally trained musician, being able to play by ear, feel is a big one. Because even when you look at like that sheet music stuff, it's like you see that everything down to the feeling of how it's played is noted mm -hmm. on there. So sometimes you get into a session with somebody who's classically trained, for instance, trying to like, I don't use professional terminology like a, like a music teacher would mm -hmm. when I describe like
like what I need. I'm more of like a feel based artist and things like that. So sometimes with classically trained musicians, it'd be like, all right, play with that, like that vibe. And they're like, huh? <laughs> yeah, they don't know. Yeah. <laughs> they don't know. I've learned to pick up some terminology to help communicate with them better. And by the same token, if you're learning music theory, just take it into consideration. That now, how did you learn that terminology? That's a big thing, too. Like, what was your way of learning that terminology to maybe communicate better with other musicians? Just reading, bro. Reading. Like, just reading. Are you a reader? Like, I read. I read a decent amount. Yeah. I watch videos a lot. Like, I'll watch a lot of different videos. I've grown up around different musicians. I had a really good mentor, this woman, Kim, who was a classically trained pianist. But she was also, like, a crazy artist as well. But her background was in conventional education in that sense. And so she kind of knew, like, certain modes and things. I just would be around it and pick it up and you know just being open to information you're not going to create in a vacuum you're not going to create anything of substance in a vacuum right. like we said it's all about collaboration and if you are just so tuned into what you're doing and you're like not listening to anything else you're gonna you know you, the product's gonna suffer so Fact. to speak Fact. you know